the Fourier transform doesn't cease to amaze me because of its wide range of applications, which include Fourier descriptors, which are used to describe a given shape. And this is what I will be talking about in this video. I will talk about how to describe a boundary or a shape based on the discrete Fourier transform. But first of all, before understanding how to get these coefficients, we need to understand how each edge point is should be represented. Well, let's assume that I have a shape like this one, say a square. I love squares every time I give examples with squares. Well, this is my shape. Right? And this is, of course, a binary uh, image, that is, the shapes here, or the edge pixels are represented by ones, and everything else is represented by zero. Well, what you need to understand here is that I have pixels, uh, or edge pixels, that represent these, uh, this square, right? and I have a limited number of pixels. Say, for example, that the number of pixels, or edge pixels, that represent this square is 60. Right, so what I do is that I can uh, I consider a given edge pixel as a starting point. Say, for example, this edge pixel here, right? So this would be k equal to zero, right? And based on that, k would be between zero and fifty-nine, right? So what I do is that for each edge pixel, I consider its coordinates as a complex number, right? So this edge pixel here has a real part, which is x, and an imaginary part, which is y. So what I say is that a given edge pixel is represented as a complex number, so the real part is its associated x dimension, and its real part is its associated y coordinate right and I do that on all the edge pixels that I have in my image or in my shape rather so this is a function now and we know that we when we have a function we can compute the discrete Fourier transform of this function right so what I do now is that I need to compute the discrete Fourier transform so say that a of u is a discrete Fourier transform, and to remind you, this is the formula. So um, it's the summation starting from k equals 0 to n minus 1, and in this case, n is equal to 59, right? We don't need to divide here by n. And here inside, I have my function that I want to transform multiplied by exponential of minus j. 2 pi k u divided by n, right? So this is my discrete Fourier transform. And the thing is, if I build a vector using these coefficients here, say I have a0, a1, a2, etc., then this thing here represents the Fourier descriptors. It's as simple as that, right? So I can use the Fourier coefficients that are used to rebuild the shape to represent or to describe my boundary. So this is how it works. And of course I can rebuild again my shape, my original shape. I can restore my original shape by using these coefficients. So if, it, if I want to obtain again my shape using this coefficient, so I can apply the inverse discrete Fourier transform. So I need just to get the summation of all the Fourier coefficients multiplied by exponential of j, 2 pi k u divided by n, and k here starts from 0 to n minus 1, right? And if I do that, I can get all the edge points of my uh, of my shape and then rebuild it again. Now, why I'm talking about that? Why I'm talking about how to restore the shape? Normally, I'm, I should be interested in getting the Fourier descriptors rather than restoring the shape. Well, this is important just to v visualize the effect of decreasing the number 
of Fourier coefficients. Say for example that I have to get this exact shape I need 100 coefficients, right? That is A would start from 0 to 99. Now if I decrease my the number of coefficients say 50 I would get something that is close to a rectangle, something like that, but you know, with uh, some smooth corners. And if I decrease again my, the number of my coefficients, I would get you know an approximation of the rectangle. I would get smoother corners. I guess something like that. And as I keep decreasing these coefficients, I get something that looks like a circle. Right now, why I'm showing this? I'm showing this because I want to say that it is possible to build a feature vector using the Fourier descriptors by using just a limited number of coefficients and just to extract, you know, the essence of the shape. So it is possible to do that, and uh, we would get an enhancement in the computational speed. This is why this is interesting. However, there are some caveats that we should take into account. If I want to recognize shapes that are completely different from each other, that is completely distinctive, for example, I want to recognize rectangles, uh, or, uh, yeah, rectangles, and then some other shape that looks like this, and then another shape that looks like, you know, something like that. So, what I would say is that this shape here, these shapes are completely distinctive. Okay, they are, they, ha they have, I mean, a huge difference in their shape. So it is possible to reduce the number of coefficients and get just a rough representation. And this would work well um, in, in practice. But if I have some shapes that are not distinctive, uh, not distinctive, that are close from each other, for example, say that I have the letter O, this is the letter O, and the number 0, and I want, you know, well, let me just draw something that looks more like this O, something like that. So in that case, if I want to represent these two shapes by the Fourier descriptors, I need to take a high number of coefficients. And the same thing is true for these two, two shapes, say that I have a rectangular shape, and something that looks like a rectangle, something like that, but with smooth corners. So in that case, say that I want to recognize these two shapes, this perfect rectangle and this rectangle with smooth corners. So in that case, I shouldn't use, I shouldn't decrease the number of coefficients. I need to get a high number of coefficients to be able to recognize my shapes. So this is the caveat that we need to take into account. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about normalization. Unfortunately, the Fourier coefficient is really prone to errors for any change in the shape. That is, it's not robust against... Uh, it has... the, 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 the uh, Fourier descriptor is sensitive with respect to rotation, scale, uh, the starting point that we use to compute the Fourier coefficient and also the position, right? And to get a normalization against that, we need to do some transformation on the Fourier descriptor. That is, we are not uh, we are not supposed to compute again the Fourier descriptors, but rather just to use the previous descriptor to conclude the new one. Say, for example, that I have the following descriptors, 1, 3, 4, exponential of g, uh, say 60, 7, exponential g, 30. So these say that these are my Fourier descriptors. So in that case, what I need to do, if I have a rotation, for example, say, of theta equal 45, right? So what I need to do is to multiply everything here by exponential of j45. And this, of course, is concluded from the properties of the Fourier descriptors. We need just to work out the properties of the Fourier descriptors, and we can get, we can conclude how to get normalization against 
the different changes. And a similar method can be applied on the changes in scale and position and so on, right? But the uh, problem is that it's difficult to get these normalizations, and I will tell you why. It's difficult because every time we need to get a new descriptor, for example here, when we had a change by 45 degrees in our shape, we needed to compute again the a new series of coefficients by multiplying the original uh, series of coefficients by exponential j45. So this is just in very rotation just for the case of 45. If I have another rotation, then I should recompute again the 4e coefficients. And this is a problem because I need something to figure out what is the rotation every time. I need a reference. And this is why uh, it's difficult to use the Fourier descriptors and we need to pay attention to the changes that we would have in our application before considering using these descriptors.